one of the biggest events of the racing calendar, Cheltenham Festival, will be going ahead today despite concerns around coronavirus. Well, 250,000 people expected to attend. Organisers say extra hand-washing facilities will be provided for race-goers. Joining us live from Cheltenham, one of the greatest jump jockeys of all time, Sir Anthony McCoy. The, the greatest. That's why he's Sir Anthony. <laughs> Very good morning to you. <laughs> good morning. Do you have any concerns about uh, sporting events like this one going ahead uh, in the current virus climate? Yeah, I suppose after the government meeting yesterday, there was obviously um, enough people with enough experience there to suggest that it was OK for the time being. And, uh, you know, at the moment, what do you do with other, you know, the likes of the London Underground with Heathrow, whatever, you know, at least in Cheltenham here, we're out in the fresh air, you know what I mean? So... Um, you know, so I'm happy that everyone else is happy that we can go ahead for now. One of the things about Cheltenham is you've got a lot of people, you've got a lot of cash, and apparently cash is a very easy way to transmit coronavirus. You've got a lot of people I, muscling I around. I don't have any cash, Pierce. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't carry cash now. You're a knight of the realm, I presume. <laughs> <laughs> can I ask you, uh, AP? Because I, I still know you as AP, even though you are Sir Anthony, and I'm quite rightly honoured in that yeah. way. What did it mean to you to be knighted? Um, you know, obviously being from, from the north of Ireland, and I, I grew up as a Catholic in Northern Ireland, um, here, so, you know, I, I feel very proud that times have moved, times have moved on, and it's, it's a great honour, you know, I'm very lucky to be involved in a great sport that obviously um, Her Majesty's very fond of, so um, for me, um, I'm, I'm, I'm very proud of it. And when you, when you chat to the Queen, I mean, you must have been one of the people, did she actually do your investiture or not? She, she didn't actually, um, um, uh, the Princess Royal did it too, I'm, I'm quite lucky to, to know um, reasonably well, so that was nice. But I have been, I, you know, I have been lucky enough to, to have, have spent some time with the Queen, I've watched um, some racing with her at Royal Ascot, she's a very knowledgeable lady as you would expect. She, um, I think two years ago she had a runner the day before and she asked me what, uh, what I thought the jockey, how, how I thought the jockey rode her horse. I don't think she was overly impressed, to be honest. But <laughs> won't mention any names, but I think she was asking me for that reason, to be honest. Is she quite? A, I mean, obviously she's very informed about horses, but, loves her horses. Is she? Did she strike you as very informed about horses? Yes. Oh, very much so. She's very knowledgeable. She knows her breeding. She knows, you know, whatever races they make, you know, her horses should be running in. Um, and she's very interested in, obviously very interested in the sport. I think it's, you know, from talking to her, it's, it's, it's definitely um, one of her main passions, if not her main passion. And, um, I say the sport is very lucky to have, have her interested and have, uh, you know, ha have her involved in the sport the way she is. Yeah. One of the big debates at the moment is about live sport generally and whether it should be played, say, football, we're both big Arsenal fans, whether it should be, the matches should be played behind closed doors. In Italy, they've gone even further. They've abandoned all the live sport now for a month. If we get to a position soon in this country where they want to play matches behind closed doors, do you think that would work? I mean, as a football fan, I just find the whole idea of stadiums with no fans, it, it's, it's sort of half the game gone. Um, yeah, I mean, like yourself, I mean, I like supporting my team. There are some times at the Emirates when I feel like there is no fans there. Um, <laughs> sometimes when we're watching, it could be a lot more lively than it could be a lot more lively than it is. Yeah. Um, you know, we don't want to be living in the past, but we were we were kind of blessed a little bit having a team like the Invincibles that we had and trying yeah. to ever get back to that level again is, is going to be very cry. hard for them. But You're going to make it me would cry. Be hard. I don't. I make, I, make, I make myself cry. But it's, you know, I think um, as a competitor, as a sports person, actually taking part in the event when there would be no fans there, I think you know, I think you'd, you know, you shouldn't be, you shouldn't be watching what's going on around you. You know, I mean, you should be concentrating on your job in hand. And if I was a footballer playing at the Emirates, uh, you know, if there was fans there, or no fans there, it wouldn't matter. I'd be, I'd be too into my job to worry about what people were, what people were watching. You know, it should be about performing to the best of your ability, and it would be a little different, but. You know, um, I think it would be better that it went ahead than not go ahead. Cheltenham has been cancelled once in the past, um, Anthony, due to the foot and mouth outbreak back in 2001. Yeah. What is the impact? It's such a special event. What's the impact um, of it being cancelled? 
I mean, it's a, it's a huge impact because obviously it is it is the biggest event, biggest event in our sport, and you can see by the 60 or 70 thousand people each day that will come here um, to prove that. So it would have a, it would have a huge impact, I think, on the local economy as well. I think as much as as much as racing, it would have a huge impact. Um, and I suppose with the position that we're in at the moment with the the coronavirus, you, you know, people, you know, have the option whether to come or not. And and you know, I should think the crowds here for the next four days will. You know, let people know what they think, whether they should or they shouldn't come. You know, I say it is that you have the option if you do or you don't want to come. But um, I'd imagine it'll still be pretty hard to walk around here in a few hours' time. Yeah, I think it's going to be absolutely packed as normal. Doesn't matter what the weather's like; they'll all be there. And of course, they'll all be having a bet. And I can't let you go, AB, without a little little tip, perhaps for your your old buddy Piers, a little little banker. A few million others. I'm a pretty bad tipster, as most people know. <laughs> Um, what horse would I go for today? I think that um, I think Astorian for Lange will, will win the first race at Cheltenham and then they'll have plenty of money to keep going for the rest of the week. I will, I'm going to pile on and then tomorrow morning I'll either be paying you great, fulsome <laughs> gratitude and tribute or I'll be hammering you. You know the rules.